Hi everyone, this is Ripper of Ripper Gaming, and today I'm going to cover something a bit different. It still has to do with the Asus ROG Ally. Um, a lot of my videos uh, lately have to do with that. So, what we're going to go over today is how to get PS5 Remote Play working on the ROG Ally. And let me kind of preface that with a little bit of information. PS5 Remote Play is a standard app that you can download. It's just called PS Remote Play. You can get it from Sony and you can set it up uh, to connect to your PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and play. And it runs great as long as you plug in one of your PS4 or PS5 controllers directly up with USB-C. Which means you can play it, but you have to hook a controller into the top of the um, Asus ROG Ally. And that's kind of a pain. Even if we could do it wire wirelessly with a controller, that would be nicer. But it is not an option. And so I've explored several different ways to do this. And there is a good application that I'm going to show you today called Rewazd. Now WASD is really just the keys you use to go up, down, left, right on a keyboard. So it, what Rewazd is, is it's a mapping software to essentially map your controller that's built into this, all the buttons will be mapped, um, and, and map them over to a PlayStation uh, remote controller, which is like a DS4, so DualShock 4. So now the only problem with that is it still requires a physical controller plugged in. And they have a fix for that, and that fix is to plug in a dock like this this long cable hanging off the top yeah it'll work but it's a bit cumbersome um, you can also use a dock like the JSOX one I have down here um, but you have to be plugged in in order to play it again probably not something you want to do so I thought I could find a better way to do this and that's where this comes in um, this is a mini USB-C dock see okay there we go it's picking it up so um it's got three usb ports on it um and then uh, or usb a ports and then this is usb c this is what you plug into the top of our dock now in all honesty we don't even care about these ports i mean you can use them if you want but the whole purpose here is to have a dock plugged into it and this mini dock works perfect and still allows for portability without having to have wires hooked up. So I'm going to cover how to get that set up today. And uh, if you like the solution, then um, I have a link in the um, description for this mini dock. And I'll also have a link for Rewazd. Um, I'm going to be using a trial today. Um, so uh, they have a seven day free trial. Download it, try it out, see if you like it. Um, and uh, if you want to buy it, I think it is $7. Um, but if you really want to do PS Remote Play and we'll do it from the Ally, then this is really a good solution. Now, there are some other solutions like Chiaki. That, so I know some people come out and say you can do it this way or that way, and that's true. Um, but this way I think is easier to set up and works fairly well. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do, turn this back on here. Okay. And so, go ahead and minimize our armory crate. Now, I'm going to bring this a little closer. Right now, we don't need this, but I'll show that to you in a moment. So, I'm going to bring this a little closer so you can see the screen while we go through our setup. All right, so I'm back. Uh, pro tip, don't take your mouse to work and then not bring it and hook it back up when you're going to do videos. So, there you go. So, the um, first thing that we're going to do here is go to rewazd.com now when you go here you're gonna see a download um, and there is an option here for pricing I believe somewhere yeah so you can see buy now from seven dollars now I believe for what we want to do which is basic mapping um, then we would be able to use just the standard or advanced mapping option here. Uh, if, if you want to get into some extras, then you can kind of buy the full featured one. Um, but 
for this video, I think advanced mapping should work fine. So, but if you end up needing to buy others, it might cost more. So um, I am using a combo here, so I might need to see if this combo is required. Um, but if it is, then that's going to cost you $14. So if you want to use this method, it's a great method to uh, um, use. But if you want to figure out how to use Chiaki and if you can get all that working, then great. Um, so anyway, we're going to go to the main page and we're just going to hit download. Now I've already downloaded it, so need, no need for me to download it again. So I'm going to close out there and then I'm going to go to my downloads folder and we're going to install Rewised any one of these they're all the same version so click on it install it standard stuff hit yes accept a million things let it do its thing see agree and install okay so now restart your PC standard stuff okay so we're back in the Windows standard setup close out of this and now we're going to open up Rewaz. Now it'll either have an icon like this on your desktop, or you can go find it here under all apps, however you prefer to get to things. Desktop is probably your easiest option, especially if you're not using a mouse and keyboard. So we're going to Rewaz here, and um, this just asks you, you know, to use the community. Uh, you can get information, different controller configs, that kind of thing. There's a lot more to Rewaz than I'm covering here. Uh, so when we go in here, you're going to see we've got a few options already. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick PS4 Remote Play. So when you do that, you can see that it's got all of these keys already mapped to your controller. Now, this works pretty much by default. You don't have to change much of this setup. There is one thing I change, though. I like to go and make a combo because... You don't really have an Xbox button. Even though this is emulating a controller, you don't have it. Also, the two back buttons on the bottom middle, those don't show up in here either. Um, but but that's fine. We, we don't have to worry about that because it'll play fine the, with the PlayStation uh, 4 or 5 without having those mapped. So, we do want to map a combo. Um, you, you don't have to if you want to try and map this another way. Or maybe if we want to... Um, try and uh, use another button but in all honesty the combo is probably the best way to go about it so when we uh, get in here we have our gamepad uh, I will tell you it does this every time sometimes you can get it to show over the bar but it kind of hides these buttons here so I'll cover those in just a minute but those have to do with turning on the config and saving the um, setup that you just did you can see we're set to gamepad here and uh, we're actually going to go in here and change this over to gamepad as well. So if we go into PlayStation here, then there's a little checkbox here for use with PS Remote Play. So you're going to need that turned on uh, in order uh, to actually play um, with PlayStation Remote Play. And the reason for that is because. To make this work, you have to have a USB hub. Now, that's where the small USB hub that I showed you comes into play. So let me grab that one, just from behind there, and we can stick that one into the top. So, let me scoot back a little. You can kind of see that's in there. Now, yeah, it sticks out a little bit, but that's a small sacrifice to be able to play without having to use an external controller. So, come back down here. We're going to choose that use with PS Remote Play. And then we're going to need to come down here. And you know what? Actually, I'll just throw my mouse on there and make it easier. That's, that's a, there is a good reason for it there. I'll throw my mouse and my keyboard onto that little bitty dock there and you see I've got small little adapters so they just go on the top and I'm going to plug that in so now I still get to keep my mouse and keyboard and I'm able to do the remote play so this option here user from remote play I'm not sure if it'll show it on mine we're going to find out here but this will ask you if you want to basically install the controller as a USB 
as basically a virtual device on the USB hub? You do. If it asks you that, you say yes, it'll reboot, and then we come back in here. So I'm going to go in here and hit the button here. So you see that's exactly what I was talking about. So it does show it again. We'll create a virtual gamepad linked to the physical USB hub. So what this is doing is PlayStation Remote Play requires that you have the physical controller hooked up. So this is creating uh, a virtual controller and it is emulating basically all your controls onto that virtual controller. And by doing that, it has to have a physical um, uh, hub on there. So that's where this little device up here comes into play. So it sticks out a little bit, but it works great. So um, we're gonna go ahead and say, restart my PC, which means yes, I want you to create this virtual gamepad and I want you to link it to the hub. Now please keep in mind, have this plugged in before you uh, try to hit power or try to hit save here. So let me see if I can get this to show because it's a little bit of a pain. Well, I'll bring it up in a minute so you can see it. Uh, it is gonna reboot uh, quickly. So starting up, same standard Armory Crate. We're gonna go ahead and close that. And um, now that we've got that mapped, we should be able to see down here, it'll load here in just a minute. But we're gonna see an icon showing us that we've got our virtual controller and the virtual controller's battery settings. Now, we don't really have a battery here, so it's not as big a deal. So you can see down there, rewised, and you can see Xbox 360 controller. So that's the virtual controller that's tied to the physical controller we're gonna be using here. So we can go ahead and right click that. Might be a little janky, but hit open rewised. And then we can go back into our PS4 remote play. And that just brings up the controller here. Let me see if I can get this to display. Basically, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna hide the taskbar. You don't have to, as long as you know what the buttons do. I'm just going to hide it so that we can get this done and you can see it. So taskbar behaviors, I'm going to automatically hide that taskbar, minimize this and now you can see what's on the bottom. So this is saying apply it to slot one. So this is basically saying all these settings that we've done, we want to apply to slot one. Um, so and that that's fine. Um, we can go ahead and turn that off, turn it on and you'll see it pops up over here and says that it's active. See, now we've got the power button on. So you want to make sure these are both lit up. Now, there is one more thing we can do um, by adding a combo. So if we click on this button here, um, you see it's got options for single press, long press, just a bunch of different things here, right? So um, that's already set to basically be tied to the PlayStation button. Now, since we don't have that, we want to go and make ourselves a combo for this in order to use it. So this little icon here, that's your combo icon, and we're going to go into add. Now remember I said this might require buying the combo edition, so that would bring the price up to $14, and I should probably have mentioned that this little device up here, somewhere around $8, $9, um, so pretty good deal for just a little bitty hub there. So. You know, there's a little bit of cost to this, but if you've spent 700, you can probably edge this out if you if you have a PS5 also. All right, so we're gonna go down here and we're gonna say a combo, and all this is doing is saying when I press two buttons, I want them to do something specific. So we're gonna do left button, which is, or actually we want left trigger, LT, which is the back button up here, and then we're gonna do RT, which is the back button here. Camera's gonna be all janky, but we'll deal with it. All right, so come down to right trigger. And so then we're gonna say the action on that, if we click on this rewise mapping, this is basically saying, when I hit those two buttons together, what happens? So what's gonna happen is, we're gonna get down here and make it bring up the PS button. So you can see that that's gonna bring up the PlayStation button, like if we had an Xbox button. So you wanna have that set up. Now, if you want to have multiple ones, you can set this up to have left and right, hold them down, and then it brings up uh, 
uh, that button, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I'm not going to go too advanced in here, but if you want to be able to hold down the button like you hold down a PS button to turn it off, that kind of thing, um, then you can do that. But really, you can close out the app and tell it to shut down your PlayStation. So you don't really have to have that. Uh, so, all right, we've got that in there. We can see we've got that combo. I like to hit apply just to make sure it's in there. And so at this point, everything should be set up. Now you can kind of go um, back to the main page here and see everything in here, but there's not really much else to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this. It's not gonna really close it. It's gonna save it um, in our taskbar there. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up PlayStation Remote Play. Now, I could do a video on this and I know a lot of the uh, people that are um, watching my channel are new to Windows and new to a lot of this. So if you want to see a video on how to set up PS Remote Play, uh, let me know. I don't mind making one. Uh, but I, this is assuming you already have it set up. So we're going to go ahead and go into that. And uh, I've actually, oh, there we go, it came up. So I have it on desktop. I have a messy desktop. Um, so, you know, if you don't have one, it'll be easy to find. So right in here, you can see I've already got my PlayStation set up. So I'm going to go ahead and just click that to connect to the PlayStation. And I think it gives me my login info, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. So now it looks like we're in. So you click on the screen here, and then you can hit down in this bottom corner. It's just two arrows pointing away from each other. That is just your full screen icon. So, I'm going to pull this camera back, make sure you can kind of see um, as far as I can get it, and I'm going to move this back. Make sure you understand, we have no wires hooked up. We do have this USB hub, but we just have that sticking out of the top, so it's fairly portable. So now, at this point, you can see I'm playing PlayStation. I'm moving around here, and if I want to get to the PlayStation button, I hit the two triggers on the back, like I told you, like we just set up. And those two triggers bring up my PlayStation button. I'm going to hit them again and go out of it or get into my normal stuff. So you've got that covered. So now you're going to play this just as if you're playing PlayStation here. Um, so yeah, let's get us some music going. Now I will tell you, give it a, you know, 30 seconds or so after you connect. Um, and at that point, everything looks good. Now, there is one other plus you need to know about here. This is streaming the game from your PlayStation. All the work is happening on your PlayStation. So that means if we go into uh, the triangle button for Command Center over here, we don't have to run in performance. We don't have to run in turbo. We don't have to run in our manual 18 watt mode. We can simply run in 10 watt silent operating mode. Now, silent is nice, but the main thing you wanna know there is if we go look at our real-time monitor, that these are our stats. So you can see our APU is pulling nine watts. Our total draw on the battery is 14.2 watts. So at this point, you can play for a lot longer, a lot less draw on the battery. And so yeah, I've seen it run from about five to 10 watts and this is playing as smooth as butter. So a very big plus. And uh, I think uh, this will make for a long gaming session uh, without having to really drain your battery. So anyway, that's how you do it. Um, hopefully I covered everything for you. Uh, as always, if you have questions, throw them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. If there's anything I missed, I'll try and make sure I cover it. So if you liked the video, appreciate a like and subscribe. Share this with your friends that got allies and have PlayStations. Uh, because I, I think this is going to be a new way I'm going to be enjoying my PlayStation 5. And to be honest with you, it doesn't get much love nowadays, but on a handheld, it's going to get a lot more uh, a time uh, in gameplay for me. So, all right, have a good one, everyone. Thanks all, and bye.